Good morning, team. It's week two and day one. We've got some new stuff for you today. We have indeed. I'm David from CrossFit Star Ancestor, aka Disco. And I'm Anna. So today, skill and throughout the whole week, we are going to teach you the squat. The squat. So it's a big, powerful compound movement. You use so many muscles and you probably use it all the time in day-to-day -day life and you don't even realise. Yeah, this is probably like this and the press up from last week. It's like the two foundation movements that link everything else together in yes. pretty much everyday life, really. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to we title this workout. What's the title of the workout today? Feel the burn. Because you will burn. feel the burn today. Yeah, there's a lot of legs today. It is so a lot of legs. Rest of the week. Well, last week we focused a lot on the upper body and the abdominal muscles. So this week we are going to switch and work on the lower body. So the session is going to start like this. We're going to start with our general warm up. We're going to go through some specific stuff for some squats today. But then go to a little quote. We'll then hit our skill work, yes. the squat. The squat. Then we'll do some conditioning. We've got a little game for you today for your conditioning. And then we'll hit the Metcon. Yes. Like last week, we have a test to make sure we can get a bit of a measure to how much you're progressing over the week, whether you're understanding these movements, and obviously then we can use that for later yes. dates. So day by day, we are going to teach you something, and it might not be that obvious as we're going through, but by the end of the week, hopefully, you will feel confident and a little bit stronger. Tying everything together nicely. Yes. Should we get started? Yeah, yeah. So let's start with the, the quote of the day, coming from my brain. <laughs> a beautiful day will start with a beautiful mindset. We talk a lot about mindset, don't we? Yeah. We are a big believer in it, and it's something that we do a lot at CrossFit Siren Tester. Yeah. So again, for those of you who want to learn a bit more about the mindset stuff, you can just give us a shout and we can talk to you about how that works in terms of everyday capacity and whether we're doing it in our sport and some competition things. Um, again, it helps a lot. Very, very simple things that make a big difference. Right, let's get warm. Okay. So we'll start off with something called a goblet squat. Some of you may have some weights at home. I think yeah. we've got some pieces out today. So this is I'm going to get the... Uh, the kettlebell. So we're going to do a goblet squat with a kettlebell. Anna's going to do it without. She's got a mock goblet squat. It looks like this. So imagine I'm drinking from 
this goblet in a very peculiar way. And we're doing 10 reps. 10's a good number. So notice I'm holding the kettlebell with the base up and the handle down. That keeps the weight close to my body. Okay. It's nice and safe. Now yeah, something next that some people can find quite challenging. This is called a praying squat. So it's going to challenge you through in terms of range of motion. It looks like this. So we're going to reach out in front. We get part way down to the point where you can hold your shoes. You can pull yourself down into your squat. At this point, we can go hands together. We're into our praying position. Then we'll go one hand up, second hand up, and then standing up all together. I'll show you from the side. I think five of these maybe? Yeah, five. I think so too. So 10 is quite a large number for these ones. And some of you will find this part the ch most challenging part, taking your hands overhead. It's definitely going to challenge the mobility, isn't it? Everywhere, not just in your hips, in your shoulders as well. So we're always mindful of keeping our chest as upright as possible, even on this part of the movement as well. RNT. RNT. RNT stands for Reactive Neuromuscular Training. That's why we breathe it to RNT. Yeah. So basically, what we're doing is we're teaching our brain and our muscles to react to a certain stimulus. When we squat, you may notice sometimes your knees collapse in. That's not necessarily a good thing. No. That's ugly and it hurts your knees. So we're teaching your brain and your muscles to react to the stimulus by pushing your knees out. You'll hear us cueing that a lot today. Knees out, knees out, knees out. Right. So Let's it looks like this. We're going to do a normal squat. You can let your knees collapse for a second. Push those knees out. And we're only going to come three quarters of the way back up. We're going to go down, in, out. Three quarters of the way up. Again, I'll show you from the sides. So we've got another little kit that we can add into this as well, which Anna's going to use for the demonstration. So this is a small band. Um, you can use any kind of band, really. Wrap it around the knees. So this gives us a new stimulus as well. So she actually, this pushes her knees in. She's got a tactile cue to push the knees out. We'll finish up. So again, we're probably going to aim for 10 reps again. Yeah. So this is my second set of five. You keep the band on if you want. Oh, yeah, yeah. So now we're going to go through something that we like in the gym. It's called monster walking. We sometimes do a monster walk conga, and that'll be monster walk social distance Hong conga if we're allowed to get back into that building. So a monster walk teaches us to turn on these muscles in your butt. Again, these are really important. We talked before about this in previous sessions about how the muscles in your butt don't necessarily switch on, they get a little bit lazy, so we're going to make sure they're turning on now. So monster walk looks like this, it's knees out, and we get to walk forwards. So I'm keeping constant tension on the band. If you don't have a band like David, you have to imagine you're pushing something out. We're going to do about a minute's worth of this. So we don't have to just go forwards and backwards. No, you go sideways. If we go sideways, try and keep the feet about hip width apart. Notice we never actually achieve full extension, so we don't ever actually stand fully upright. I want to show you some of these sideways. I might go backwards. My feet never go together. <laughs> and keeping it in random directions, you're probably starting to feel the burn now. That's why it's called feel the burn. <laughs> you definitely will feel the burn if you're doing this correctly. Yeah, with a band, most definitely. So if you're not quite there and you're not feeling it, it might be because you're not keeping that tension out with those knees to really activate the glutes. Yep. Perfect. Good stuff. So that's a nice little warm to make sure the hips are prepped. The knees are nice and warm. Just feel fired on. Yep, and butts ready to roll. Into our skill work. Skill. So, the squat. So, the conventional squat is going to look something like this. If I get them, David to demonstrate first, just so you can see. And if I can get you to turn sideways, David. So, concentrate on David's hips. So, what we want to see in a, well, perfect squat, nothing's quite so perfect. Your feet position to start with should be between your hip and your shoulders. 
Now, as David starts to descend, we want to move your hips and your knees simultaneously. So with your hips, imagine I'm pulling David back. As he starts to descend and lower, you see the knee position like we did in our warm up. We are slightly being pushed out and we want to make sure we're tracking with the second and third toe. Now, if you go side on for me, we said, look at these hips. So where should we see the hips land? So as he goes down, 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 we want to make sure that that hip is below the knee. So you want your bum below your knee and drive up. Let's focus on the upper body. So as David comes down, we're keeping lots of tension. We're keeping the chest up and the chest is driving the lift up. Nice. So that might be a little bit hard for some people some who haven't yeah. got very good mobility. So in that option, do you want to show a scale version? Yep. Yeah. Use the chair? Yeah, use the chair. So we also have the good old standby. Oh, static shock again. <laughs> standby with the chair. I was ready for it that time. So exactly the same thing. I'm pushing my butt backwards to find that chair. Everything comes down as one. I'm just going to touch with my butt, a little gentle kiss, and then I stand up. So what we don't want to do is just collapse and come up because we're not building any tension in the body. So we're not having the muscles holding them under tension. And we really, really need this to grow strength. So again, nice and controlled. So slowly lower yourself in, just touch and then drive up. Now, as we go through the next few days, we will show you some things to help improve that mobility. So don't worry if you're quite not there, it's yeah. fine. So if they haven't got a chair or they're at a stage where they're just in between the full spot and the chair, what can we do? Let's go part way down. Yep, so you show that. So let's go to a range of motion that's safe for you. A depth that feels like it's challenging you. It's definitely feel everything's turning on. Right from there. So you're always trying to get you to work to a range that's safe. Now, if you're finding you're collapsing forwards, what they can do is use a wall at home, can't they? Yep, use a wall. So what that will do is just help you keep nice and upright. Because one of the biggest problems we find is people tend to, I'll demonstrate, collapse forward in the squat. So if that's one of the problems, use a wall and you can just squat down the wall. Yeah, so it's facing the water so we can keep that chest upright. We sometimes talk about having an imaginary stained glass window, like a priceless stained glass window in front of you. You don't want to smudge your face in that stained glass window. You want to make sure we keep that chest upright. And again, as soon as you start adding weights, if you're adding barbells and that kind of stuff, if you start seeing this position happening, you know something's gone wrong. We want to make sure we keep you upright, particularly if you're doing some kind of Olympic lifting. All the Olympic lifts make you sure that that chest is very upright. So you want chest up, you want to get the butt, below the knees and we want to keep those knees out. We can just remember those coaching points. Right, should we get uh, warm conditions? There is loads and loads of extra stuff we can add in. But, but that, it's just, we don't want to overload the brain right now. Right, one minute on the clock, let's play a game. Yes, let's have a little game. So this is something we sometimes add into our classes. I'm going to pop a minute on the clock. It's going to count down for us. Not 11 minutes, that'll be a bit too harsh. So this is tempo squat practice. So what we'd normally do is we get you in a big sort of kumbaya style circle and we play a down and up game. So it gives you a chance to practice what we've just taught you in a fun way. Yep. So David is going to control the tempo of the squats to begin with. He gets to do that for three squats and then we're going to switch. So let's have a go. One minute is a long time team, stand by. I think we're ready to roll. 10 seconds team. Here it comes in five. So we're going to go together, down. I'm going to spend a bit of time at the bottom. How's that feel? Easy. And then up. Let's go down and up. My last one. Down and up. So it's my turn. Right, down, up. Ooh. Down, up. Down, up. Quick so you've got to listen. You've got to be reactive. Ready? Together as a team. Down, up. Down, oh, <laughs> and up, down, up. Let's go down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, holding, 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 up, down, up, down, up. And tight. So I hope you can start feeling the legs starting to warm nicely for that one. Yeah. 
Absolutely. That's a good little challenge. It is. So, we need to teach this workout. Okay, so we're going to go through and do a little, little test to begin with. Yes, we are. So, a big important part of the squat is having what we call isometric strength. So, strength in these big quad muscles, your hamstrings, your calves, to help stabilise you in a squat. Yeah. So, we are going to use a squat hold, aren't we? Yeah. So, some of you can do this at home using the wall. Some of you don't necessarily have walls at home like we don't have here. Okay. So, we're going to do, do a demonstration for you. Let's show you how to show you how work nicely. So, if you do have a wall, you're going to slide yourself down and hold your bottom of your squat. So, we want to see your bum below the knee. Yeah. We don't want you to go too low. So you lose tension and we don't want you to be too high that you don't have any resistance in there. Okay? Well, a nice little twist as well to add into this because again, working that, we talked about keeping that chest upright. It's very easy to start leaning on your thighs and resting there. So we're going to have to do another position to keep your chest upright. So, so if you haven't got the wall, this is what you are doing. We are holding here. So it's not collapsed at the bottom. If you it's... find it too easy, this is what we do to make it a little bit harder, don't we? This is what's called a prisoner style squat. So. Hands behind the head, chest upright and elbows back. This is exactly the same as you guys would use on the wall at home. So if you have a wall at home, you're going to lower yourself down into your prisoner style squat, 90 degrees at least at your knees, shoulders back on the wall, elbows on the wall and holding. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. We are going to do this for a maximum of two minutes, so no more. Do not worry if you can't achieve two minutes. We want you to look at the clock when you finish and just note your time down. Yeah. Again, so don't worry. This isometric stuff is actually quite challenging. Some of you will find it quite easy and you can hold it for a long period of time. It depends on what your background is, maybe in sports or other activities. Um, and then we're going to go into the second part of the workout. Yes. So once we finish the two minutes, we are going to go straight into our workout. So your first ladder is a 21 15 9 and we have two movements. Now, if you have been following us, you would have already learned this first movement, which is we call the snatch. So let's demo. So I'm using a dumbbell and it's got a bottle. We're going from the floor to overhead in one motion. So it'll be 21 snatches. If you don't have any kit available, you can just touch the floor, hand overhead. But That's most people have a water bottle or a can or something, so that'd be pretty good. If you guys are using dumbbells, it's the same with the dumbbell. We've grabbed a kettlebell today as well. With the kettlebell, it's exactly the same thing from the floor to overhead. Notice that my hand pushes through the kettlebell, so it's going across, diagonally across my palm. Or you can go from the floor to overhead in a bottom up style, a bit like that goblet squat earlier. So the base is pointing towards the ceiling. And then your second movement, once you've done 21 snatches, is 21 air squats. So we're practicing all these coaching points today. So 21. Then you go through 15, 15, 9, 9. Now, once you finish, you are going straight into our second ladder. So this time we are going from a 9, 15, 21. And your two movements are a thruster. So a full depth squat into a overhead press. Now, if you only have one piece of kit, you can do this with a single arm. Just maybe switch over halfway to make sure you're doing both sides. Once you have done 21 of your, no, sorry, nine of your thrusters, you are going into nine jump lunges. This will definitely get you out of breath. So again, if you have been following us, we have done this movement before. If this is a little bit too challenging, you just take the jump out. It is that simple, guys. So we do nine, 15, then your 21. Then the workout is done. So we've got a lot to do. Yeah. We've got 10 minutes, starting with our two minute wall sit, straight in then after two minutes into our first ladder. Right, should we get the time on the clock? Get ready to go. So the clock will do everything automatically for us. It's gonna count up to two minutes, and then count up again to the remaining eight, making it 10. So you'll have a time on your clock. And if you want to post us your times, so we can check through and see who's the, the top athlete today, that'll be a great stick stuff for a photograph, send it to times. Anna, ready? I'm ready. Athletes ready? Let's make a start, 10 seconds. Should you do a minute each? Can I, yeah. I get a chance to talk then. So again, it's lowering yourself in your squat against the wall, ideally. Otherwise, we can do a squat, sit, hold, as Anna's practicing now. This is a great position anyway, so it's something we should practice every single day. Um, a lot of the uh, eastern side of the world will spend a lot of time in this position, for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, but again, 
great for mobility in the hips, great for mobility in the ankles, great for mobility in the, in the knees. It's a good all-round position to practice. So they could do it hovering over a yep. chair, couldn't they, David? You can do it over a chair, so you've got a little bit of safety net ready to go. So we're 30 seconds in. Anna's pushing for the minute. Looking good so far. So again, all those cue coaching points. Knees out, chest up, nice, yeah. proud position. As you get tired, you will start to want to bring that form in, yeah. won't you? Your knees will want to collapse, your arms will want to collapse, so we've got to fight as hard as we can to keep that perfect technique and build those foundations today. Five seconds, Anna, then we'll switch round. Okay. Okay, David's in. So again, it's also on this position here, you can be you can cheat a little bit, we're trying to avoid cheating, we can just start to collapse into the yeah. bottom of the squat. We don't want that, we want to keep you under tension. We definitely need to keep under tension in this wall sit or squat hold. That's how we are going to build really strong muscles. Like I said, you are going to get tired, so don't worry. Just note your time down. We're only doing a two minute maximum today. So we're being a bit naughty actually, aren't we? Because this is actually going to free fatigue you going into the workout. So you might find the workout a little bit more challenging. You're doing brilliantly, guys. We're nearly there. So remember, we're going straight in to that 21.59 of snatches and air squats in 15 seconds. So just hang on, guys. A little water today, this one. We're on the dumbbells. Yep, I'll grab a dumbbell. So you can use any weight. Obviously, but normally in a class, we probably have a 22 and a half Two, for the men. One, let's go, guys. So 21. 21 snatches. So Anna's alternating arms. You'll find a natural tempo. You can change hands on the way down if you've got lots of skills. Or you can change hands on the floor. So I think Anna's going to go through a 21 and 21 squats. Yeah. Try that. Perfect. So I get the 15 round, but it doesn't mean I get there on the thrusters. So we're doing that you go, I go again. YG, IG, as you see when you abbreviate it sometimes. So we're 30 seconds in, Anna's looking strong. So you can probably, most of you probably go unbroken on this 21, depending on what, what weight you're using. Yeah, it depends on the weight. So normally in a class we'd have the males on a 22 and a half kilo dumbbell and the females on a 15, but again, there's always gonna be scales for everyone. So sometimes we'd obviously scale down to make sure the exercise is appropriate for your level of fitness. 21s and uh, 5 kilos is a nice treat today. How are we doing? 19. So I get the round of 15. Tag it in. 15. Okay, so the snatch. We want to do it in one movement, if you can. So from the floor, straight overhead. And the hips are really important in this movement. I might show you from the side, might be easier. Really good. So notice the effort comes from my legs. It's very tempting. Let it come from the back. Yes. So it's definitely a leg driven movement. All those hips, all that glute. 15 squats. So remember the coaching points chest up, butt below knees. Knees out. Nice and simple to remember. So Dave is using a technique we use a lot in competitions. Is imagine that you're swimming, you're breaststroking. It's quite effective for speed. And that's 15, over to you. So it's the round of nine. So talking to competitions, if you guys are interested in CrossFit competitions, we'd normally have Probably what, 30 kilos for the men, 22 and a half for the females. That's the sort of top level competitions. That's quite serious weight for this movement. This would probably be something like a goblet squat instead. On the same Seven, weight. Seven, eight, nine. So now we're into the second workout. Nine thrusters. Well, that worked nicely. So there's no recovery today, no break. One movement, ladder, straight into the other ladder. So again, look at that squat technique. Chest up, butt below knees, knees out. Even though we're doing a thruster, the squat is the foundation of that movement. Jump lunges. 
So this is creating power in those legs. Power and speed, chest up. So my knee's just gently kissing the ground. You obviously don't want to smash it into the floor. 15. Round of 15s. We'll definitely feel the burn on those 21s. <laughs> So again, it's hip crease below knee, coming fully upright into that extended position. Head popping into the gap between your arms. 12. We're close. So that's four minutes on our clock. Again, we're not necessarily expecting you guys to try and keep up the same speed as us working together as a pair. In theory, we should be a little bit faster than you guys. <laughs> we do have to speak, so we can't go too fast. 13, 14, you'll go. Here we go. 21. The finale. Okay. So as we start getting more tired, you might decide to break these reps up. So classically, we would go maybe 11 and 10, maybe 21, or three sevens. Yeah, absolutely. The main thing today is your form. Trying to maintain those coaching points. Chest up, butt below knee, knees out. That is your focus today. How are we doing? So it's 14. Well done. Oh, five minutes on the clock. So this clock is running to eight minutes? That's correct. Okay. Well done. 21. Okay, so 21 jump looking lunges. forward to. <laughs> so remember, if the jump is too much, just take it out. Any niggles, just take it out. This is obviously the more advanced move from just the normal conventional stepping lunge. So well done if you're giving it a go today. 20. And one. Well done. So keep going, guys. Keep going until you finish both ladders. That got me super out of breath. Bit of a sweat on. That was a good one. So it was very much focused on that squat, building these good foundations as we move throughout this week. Two minutes remaining, team. It was good. So we're wearing our new tops this evening. I'm Yeah, really From nice. Halo. Halo. Big thank you to Ree. Yeah, she has awesome clothes. You should check it out. <laughs> Big fan of the leggings. <laughs> We've got some mermaid leggings <laughs> on my wish list. Oh, Dave. He's not even taken. <laughs> 90 seconds, athletes. Come on, guys, you got this. So, yeah, we start to get in channel, like I said, break it down. Do those big sets. Maybe 11 and a 10, or three sevens. Awesome. Here it comes. One minute. One minute coming up. So hang on. Squeeze the last few reps out. We're very, very close. Oh, coming into the last minute then. Right, 60 seconds. The final countdown. Final One minute push. to go. How'd you find that? That was good. Are your legs burning? It'll Do you feel the yeah. burn? It'll be definitely challenging on your own. <laughs> it definitely will. Like David said, you might need to break up those reps, and that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Again, it's all about achieving the best that you can possibly do. You're not ever competing yeah. against anyone else, just doing the best that you can manage yourself. Coming into the last 30 seconds. Here it is, 30 seconds on the clock, team. We're so close to finishing now. Digging I mean, for the last few minutes. Yeah, and if they have already finished, amazing yeah. job. Yeah, good job. You definitely get a high five from me, that'll be... Pretty challenging on your own. We are using to find kilo, dum kilo dumbbells, and that was uh, <laughs> pretty hot and sweaty. Here it is, 15 seconds. Four. That magic number, last five coming up. Come on then, guys. Four, three, two, two one. one. Well there we done. go, good work, bravo. So I'm gonna turn that clock off. It goes to a little cool down. So you may have some extra bits and pieces of equipment on the stage today. Um, we've got a foam roller. So most people at home have a foam roller of some description. And we've got one of these things. So this is a, 
a mobility wad ball. So we use this a lot. Uh, it's unlikely you'll have one of these. But again, if you have a lacrosse ball or a tennis yeah, ball. They do just as good as a job. Yeah. Um, so we're going to show you some cooling down stuff today with, with that piece of equipment. So the foam roller, for those who may not have been taught how to use this, we've got a flat part and a knobbly part. We're going to use this flat bit. We're going to work on the front part of our legs. Um, probably most of you have to do one leg at a time. We need to do really a minimum of 20 rolls. And it's going to do a similar yep. thing on the ball. So using the ball, the ball's a smaller point of contact. So that means it's going to be slightly more painful for Anna. Sorry. It's okay. So we're going to go to like a plank position, pop that roll, roller in place, and long rolls, the pressure going on towards the hip, easing up towards the knee. So it's never actually on a joint. I'm going to do 20 reps. And it, you know, the, the quadricep muscle, the, the muscle at the front of the legs, it really does work hard during yeah. squats. So that's why they're probably going to feel a little bit tender. You can play around with your hip position. So notice I just turn my knee slightly out to the side. Same thing for Anna, can do the same thing on that ball. The ball obviously gets you slightly more of a challenge and turn slightly in. Try and avoid that outside part of your leg, which we're trying to tend not to do that anymore. So you can just middle section is good, but avoid the outside part. I'll show you another little piece of that in a moment. So the more weight you place onto it, <laughs> as we say, the more uncomfortable it will feel. So again, just work to a scale that is not painful. It should not be excruciating no, at all. No, definitely not. Pain is not your friend in this environment. One. So we're going to work on the hips. We've done a little bit of time for the work on the buttocks. So we're going to get the foam roller in this area here. So you better feel a bony section where your pelvis is. And we're going to work just below that. So The meaty part. Yeah, the meaty part. Just above Not the ball the and the ball and socket. In that area there. So Anna's going to do the same thing on the, uh, the ball itself. This is a really good drill on the ball. It doesn't work quite as effectively on the foam roller. But nevertheless, we'll still get a good little... So rather than rolling up and down, I'm going to roll from front to back. So I'm creating a pressure wave from front to back. If you watch my knee, you can see that I'm rolling front to back rather than up and down. I'm using my scaled side plank just to help take a little bit of the weight off because this one can be quite sore. Yeah, it's unlikely many of you use this area before. Okay. Switching sides, exactly the same thing on the sides. So it's below the pelvis but above the ball and socket. Again, I'm rolling front to back. Anna's... Just holding. Holding, yes. So it's clearly quite uncomfortable for Anna. She's just holding in position. If it's okay, you can obviously do little circles. You can roll front to back. Again, and the emphasis is you shouldn't be in pain. So if you are, don't do it. Some stretching. We're gonna use a chair. We're gonna do a couch stretch on the chair. Anna's gonna do it from the floor. Again, we also refer back to this one. This is a great stretch. So you can use it on the sofa at home or against a wall. Anna's taking hold of her own foot. My foot is supporting the chair. Squeeze my butt tight, stretch the front part of my thigh. So again, we've got to hold this about 45 seconds, ideally up to a minute, really. Let's switch sides. Same thing on the other sides. I'm going to give you loads of extra stretches this week because we're spending so much time on the quads in that squat. Again, see the same position again as chest up. And then collapsing too far forwards in this one. Weekly arching over backwards, rib cage right. down. Good. Legs feel okay? Yeah, they feel good. Superb. Day one in the bank. Yeah, you get a high five. You guys get virtual high fives, superb. So they said, you can send us through your times today for that workout, that was a good challenge. If you, that's big kudos there if you managed to finish that yep. with some decent weights. And just keep it handy because we will be retesting on Friday. <laughs> so like David said, well done today guys. So today we just introduced the squat and put down some coaching foundation points. So hopefully you have learned a little bit today and tomorrow we will be moving on. Yep. More squatting. More squatting. Slightly different range of motion. More <laughs> awesome, fun. guys.
Well done, team. Well, All well those done. calories burned today. Good job. Yeah, and we will see you tomorrow. Yeah. Have a great day. Take care.